I was just in the middle of doing something as I'm just to turn my brain on. So, yeah, no. Lovely morning there. It's a bit of rain here. Oh, is it? Yeah, we're supposed to get rain soon. Apparently. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, I don't know how soon, but apparently very soon. Mm. Right. Tomorrow. What have you been up to? I played frisbee yesterday for the first time oh, yeah. in 30 years. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so lots of walkies yesterday on the heath. Uh, well, not lots, but yeah. Um, oh, Hamster heath. Yeah. Did a little bit of paper reading. I found a book a couple of days ago um, called, one was called Tradesmen and Their Tokens. Uh, it was from the 17th century. Another one that was covering maybe 18th and 19th century, uh, which is all quite interesting. But then on a similar subject, it was a book which I'd seen before, but I became more interested in. They were selling them at the library. Um, this was called History of British Coinage. Yeah. And so at the appropriate page, there was Lantrison. Oh, right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Which is easier for me to pronounce now that I've seen it written down. Oh yeah. Uh, not, not that there's anything difficult about hearing, seeing, or pronouncing it, but you know, if you hear something, Clantrison. Oh, is it Clantrison? Clantrison. Clan. 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 Yeah, because it looks like it's just an L in uh, in it's the book. Two L's. Yeah. Oh, mm. uh, is it right? And so they had this uh, shot from way above it, from probably 68 or whenever. Um, and it looked massive. Yeah, it's well, I mean, it's... Uh, I mean, it moved from, from London. And, and uh, yeah, back then. Yeah, striking coins, looks it's like. Really ugly building. So do you know people who've worked there? Um, I take it it's a big employer in the town. Uh, <clears throat> well, I mean, over the years, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's, I, I, I mean, I don't know how many people it employs, uh, but I mean, it's modern production, all the rest of it. So it's, you know, it's, it, it's minimized. Modern. Yeah. So. I mean, it's the, the industrial estate down the bottom of, uh, it's called the Glantrissant Mint. It's, it's closer to Talbot Green. And, um, you know, but yeah, yeah. But that's where the Royal Mint is anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it was interesting for me to just have a look at um, these different, uh, particularly the books on tokens, these different coins that were struck by people um, so let's say there was a building at the end of the Strand with three floors, which sold exotic animals. And so oh, yeah. it, its coin had some different animals on it. Mm. Uh, you know, it had different coins of different animals. And so a, I saw a cabbage coin, you know, and it's just so sort of different. It's almost like a guild releasing a coin, except it was a business. Um, so it kind of reminded me of people doing initial coin offerings now. And, and making it sound like it's a really big deal, but actually before it was normal. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it's um, it's a very, very simple thing. I mean, you can print or strike an IOU. That's what, that, that, that's what, what money is. Mm. So, you know, um, I, it, it's, <laughs> it's really, really simple and people make it very very complicated but that's <laughs> i mean that's the modern world around you and i mean i, I i'm I, i've i've run out of patience with just about everybody now um you know it, it's a rinse and repeat cycle which i've seen so many times before um and the new crop of people are coming up sort of saying oh you know such and such and it's you know it might be new to them but it's it, it frankly it's never been hidden and if people don't know about stuff it's, it's simply because they haven't bothered to find out so i, I watched 
UK column the other day. And uh, uh, they were going, oh, well, there's this organisation and they do this and they have this funding and all the rest of it. And it's all, you know, uh, well, why don't we know about this? Well, the reason they don't know about it is they haven't looked before. They've been going around with their fucking eyes closed. <laughs> so, you know, a- a- absolutely everything isn't a revelation, but it is. It's right, it's right there. It, 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 it is if you haven't taken the trouble to find out. And it's not even a question of sort of saying, oh, well, if people haven't found out, that means they're asleep, all of that stuff. I mean, the, the slog annoyed me yesterday. I mean, John was quoting statistics and sort of saying, well, you know, the number of fatalities of people who are vaccinated is is high and all the rest of it. And statistically, this is that and this is the other. Um, risible statistics from the government. Um, well, it was risible analysis from John, because quite frankly, um, deaths with COVID are overstated, as we know. Um, the, the, the statistics on the government page, if you go through them, does actually break down what other comorbidities there may or may not have been. Uh, but what is absolutely apparent is that there are very few deaths anyway in general. And so a subset of deaths in general and the breakdown for age structure, OK, means that um, a headline of 74 percent of people who die of COVID have been vaccinated. Okay. You're, you're dealing with an insignificant sample, you, you, you know, and people draw all of these conclusions um, to support whatever prejudice they've now got baked in. And um, well, that's how the system works that, you know, if, if you want to run things, you're quite happy for people to be running around in ever decreasing circles. Is it, you know, of course you are. Um, and I, like I say, I, I'm absolutely, I, I haven't got time anymore um, to, you know, to even bother with it. I mean, it's, um, e- everything's been hung out there to dry. And, 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 and you know, the smalls, if you like, of, 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 of government are, are there on the washing line. Um, and, and, Jesus Christ, if people haven't had a good enough look for now, then kind of think, right, OK, let's move forward just knowing, well, that's how it is. You know, that's how things are. Um, you know, how people, how, how propagandists say things are. I mean, it's propaganda. Of course, it's not the truth. Right. Um, but all of the hysteria gives way, way more um, stock, if you like, to uh, the system, you know, or whatever you want to call it, the New World Order, the, you know, whatever people call it, um, the system itself is yeah. made of individuals and, and each individual within it more or less has the same amount of power, frankly. Um, combinations of certain slightly more influential people can build their uh, influence. Uh, but one of the most brilliant things on the whole internet is David's series, um, Why Are We Here? Right? You know, the series of four programmes he made, which went out on Curiosity Stream, right? And one, okay. of, the, um, one of the episodes is called um, Being S- Seeking Meaning, right? But, but it's the interview with Martin Noak, Noak and the 12 to the, log, 12 to the log 2 minus 8, okay? Which is the... Um, that's the inverse of the exponential, right? And everybody talks about exponentials. Um, and 12 to the log 2 minus 8 is probably the most important um, equation or whatever um, in political economy, which is why no one knows about it. And what it actually shows is that 
when when people get together and cooperate, okay, they can get to a measure of um, uh, stability or, you know, um, certainty, okay, than is available if people um, decide to go for exponential uh, long tail risks, put it that way, okay. So, um, that people in general do not understand the world, okay. Take that as a given. None of us understand that. I don't understand the world. I mean, you know, I mean, I understand my little bit of it almost, or kind of, and we all understand enough to sort of put one foot out in front of the other. Um, but, uh, 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 uh. The, the, the hysteria of the last couple of years was induced there's no two ways about it um but people continue to be hysterical realizing or should by now sh having should have realized that it was induced okay um because it can you know it only lasts for so long and and and, and um you know we are all individual powerful so that's like the, the mumford quote um about uh uh we can walk out of the technocratic prison as soon as we like the doors open even though it's on rusty hinges lewis mumford um you know that there you have it so all the outrage all the ignorance all the hysteria you know bar I've, I've got no time left for it i really haven't you know um and it, what are you what are you up what are you up to at the moment? I'm busy working. I've, 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 I'm making a lot of progress with the business, and and I've got two schemes uh, which, which I'm trying to get together to get on site, and uh, you know just just kind of getting on with it. I mean, it, it, there are shifting sands, of course there are. Of course there are systems. You can't have you can't have civilization without systems. And how those systems work and the individual components, how they're run and the fact that they change. Um, I mean, that shouldn't surprise anybody, um, you know, but I, I, my, my motto is stop complaining and fucking do something. Do something constructive instead of complaining. Um, and, and if you look at uh, alternative media, social media and the mainstream media in general, it's a bunch of people complaining, saying the same thing over and over again and, and achieving absolutely diddly bloody squat. So I'm getting on with things and, you know, I, 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 I really couldn't give a fuck what other people are doing. I mean, they, you know, do no harm and stick to your own knitting. I mean, it's. Uh, yeah. I, I, so, as I say, I mean, I, I, I've run out of patience with a lot of it, you know, and uh, it's. Uh, I got to the same playing guitar. I mean, when I decided to learn and study music properly, I spent five years doing it. And the same people on the same forums at the beginning of that five years were saying exactly the same thing at the end of the five years and have made absolutely no progress whatsoever with the objective, which presumably was to learn to play the bloody guitar. Um, but, you know, that isn't apparently why many of these people frequent those places. I, you know, oh, it beats me, but you know, I, I don't, whatever floats their boat, you know, I don't, I, I don't pay it any mind. I mean, it's, uh, I see the same thing in, in, in all of this sort of online activism bollocks. It's, you know, um, it, if, if you can't take it offline into real life, okay, what you're doing is basically just sat around scratching your ass. Um, and, <clears throat> And, 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 you know, sort of uh, the narcissism of small differences, you know, it's kind of like, you know, scratching the arse with, uh, with, 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 with double twist and pike. And then they all score each other. Well, as a result of it being August, um, it's unlikely that I'll be doing any filming for William uh, at the moment. Um, because, you know, obviously Parliament shut. Um, 
he told me that he does go to the conferences. Oh, so yeah. The Tory conferences in Birmingham, um, I guess, at the beginning of October. Um, I don't think there's enough value added by me to justify his firm paying for my transport up there. Thank you. But I'm not, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, he'd have to ask. Um, but uh, regardless, because I mean, he has he has been expensing me. Uh, if you see what I mean, I've been an expense. Mm. So so it's been coming through uh, like that. You know, he just said yes at the beginning and then he's been putting it on. So maybe. But regardless, um, I mean, the idea of me going from age 19, going to Glastonbury and thinking, yeah, this is where it's at, to age 45, going to the Tory Boy Conference and saying, yep, this is where it's at. Because um, as I told you, you know, I do enjoy... You know, going up to people as they walk past and say, what do you think of these odds? You know, la -da -da. Mm. I watched, uh, so I don't know if I'll go or not. You know, I just mentioned it because you know about my work with William, but um, I watched the debate yesterday, some of it. Really? I, I didn't even know there was one, Rand, Jen. Well, what, what I found interesting was, I don't think I told you, at one point we interviewed uh, Tom Harwood of GB News, who was really good. Uh, on uh, the stats and the, mm. on the on the on the odds and stuff. This is about three weeks ago, um, and then um, yeah, he put out a tweet a couple of about a week ago, saying, you know how sometimes they have a debate which is head to head. Then apparently Liz Truss she put something out to say that she'd be pulling out the head to head. So then when I watched it yesterday, I realised oh what that meant was she wanted to deal with the audience and the uh, presenter on her own and Sunak did it on his own so what was interesting was at the end they said that more people in that audience and it was the first time I'd seen an audience of people who were members of the party said that they would vote for Sunak and not for Liz Truss well I you know I yeah, so that was. I mean, yeah. if that's interesting. I, I certainly don't find it interesting. I've no interest in it whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't. I didn't watch it on the basis that it was riveting television. Uh, I watched it because I'd had a good day, and at the end of the day, I, I put it on. And um, yeah, I mean, the point. Was, my uh, point is this: you've seen one, you've seen them all. Watch David Davis and Cameron, and it's the same thing over and again. You know, or, or watch, you know, do you remember we've been through all of this as well with the two challenges to Jeremy Corbyn? Oh, who was the funny Welsh bloke? Can you remember? Owen him? Smith. Owen Smith, you know. I mean, it, it's the. It, it's... Look, this is the thing, right? They, they, they both set out two, two polar arguments and argue their heads off. Okay. Uh, and, and, and the bit in the middle remains the lie between the two lies, if you see what I mean. Um, so they, they don't actually talk about any substantive premise that would lead to any concrete change. One will claim that they are and the other will claim that, that what they what, what. So so Sunak is saying. Uh, well, interest rates and uh, well, taxes. No, what he's saying, this is the orthodox financialized capitalist view, and I am the fiscally conservative and socially liberal candidate. So that's what he's saying. And what exactly. he's saying is that she is um, socially liberal, but fiscally innovative. OK, well, the fiscal innovation on either side is actually deeply orthodox based on the um, very slippery concept of how the financial system actually works, which is something that, you know, most people are absolutely ignorant about. OK. Um, and uh, it's it really isn't of any any import whatsoever. You know, I mean, the decisions are made in the Treasury in the Bank of England, the Bank of England and the, you know, IBS, uh, the, What's two the people running to be 
international bank settlements. OK, so, yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, all that is up in the air. OK, but when you were looking into uh, ESG, OK, that, that's way more interesting. I mean, the only person that's kind of gone down that road, road is Steve Baker. And, and he's been massively sidelined. Um, when Dominic Cummings was interviewed by the Treasury Committee that was um, chaired and by your man, Tyree, Tyree. OK, uh, Steve Baker asked um, Dominic Cummings two questions uh, specifically on uh, what Cummings thought. Now, UK Column were talking about some website that Cummings is behind again. Um, and... Uh, I think the sidelining of Steve Baker is interesting. Um, I think that um, the nobbling of uh, uh, Rhys Mogg is equally interesting. He was nobbled at the uh, uh, at the Brino meeting uh, with uh, at Checkers, right? So there's a hell of a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. But none of it's got to do with you know, who gets to be the prime minister. You know, whether it's Starmer, whether it's Sunak, whether it's um, uh, whatever she's called, uh, you know, Truss. It, it, really, it really doesn't matter. It will only start to matter when people sign up to something like Wikibala, there are other things out there as well, and start voting for policies, but hold their local MPs to account for those policies and get down into the into the grassroots of local politics as well. Right now, doing that, that will make a difference. So obviously the Tory party art activists, you know, in effect, get to vote for the next prime minister. Well, that doesn't really matter. What really matters is that they hold their local MP to account and start getting things building from the ground up. Same with local politics, right? And the best way to do that is to um, uh, monitor policy as if people matters, as if citizens matter, or in the UK as if subjects matter, because obviously we're all subjects of a majesty in the UK, we're not citizens. So, um, but all of that, I mean, that, that's hair splitting. What matters, OK, is that people understand the power that they have themselves of, of that vote and that they hold their representatives accountable. We have a representative democracy, which means the representative has a huge degree of voting their own conscience. Right. So that's a distinction we discussed several years ago. Uh, the difference between a delegated and a representative democracy. A direct democracy is delegated, uh, whereby, uh, so if you've got a representative democracy, you have to be really, really careful that that representative is not an elitist, because the elitist will sort of say, well, you've got a choice of a bunch of elitists, we do what we like when we get in. So that's Carol Pateman's um, thing. So I mean, I, when, I, when I, I wrote a blog called The Iron Law of Oligarchy, uh, back in 2016, I think it was, and every word of it is still absolutely true. Absolutely, fuck all has changed. Um, and, you know, since I wrote that, I've probably seen the same thing regurgitated. About, you know, it's, that's eight years ago. So, no, it's not six years ago. Um, and, well, Ranjan, I mean, it, it, it's... I'm fed up of people excusing their own ignorance and, and laziness from not taking the trouble to find this shit out. I mean, I really am. You know, well, I, th I think you made a very good point. Can't remember when, when you said that we ought to look at what was being discussed in 2016, 2017, because the amount of different uh, distractions that have occurred since then uh, have meant that those issues are still there it's just that they've been parked yeah but which and, issues that's the point the, the, well, the, what, the, point, the point you were making issue generally isn't an issue that that's the other thing yeah but um, the point you were making was that there's some of the issues in 2016-17 that were being discussed you were saying they were being uh, okay, can i just I'll, I'll butt in again okay narratives are not issues 
Okay, <laughs> people run around in circles going on about narratives. Let's define issues and then talk of premises around those issues. And you won't find that in any of the narratives. Yeah, but what about affordable housing? That's still an issue. Well, but the point, well, the thing is, is that it's miscast as a housing crisis. And all of the um, the starting point that people take with it by not actually looking at the essential ingredients of what you're dealing with, OK, allows the perpetuation of the price support scheme. That is the British property market, which only concerns itself with um, the, you know, the top half, if you like. Mm. Right? Now, the bottom half has been bouncing along the bottom for donkey's years. I mean, I've analysed all that stuff. You remember right? that? I mean, I, I, yeah. um, uh, but I'm acting on what I've analysed. I know the components and I'm getting on with it. Other people, like, I've been reading some great stuff today about some co-housing initiatives and all the rest of it. The trouble, as always, though, is a lot of these people, they reinvent the wheel and they approach it as if no one else has ever thought about it. If, if people are slightly more scholarly in their inquiries, they'll actually find that these things have been discussed ad nauseum since the mid 1850s, for fuck's sake. You know, so so issues written about um, and argued about between Proudhon and 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 and, 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 Bakun, in principle, um, and Marx, uh, and then on into uh, the discourse between Kropotkin and Darwin, for instance, um, and and going on forward to that into the 1930s. You know, the 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 the, the, the marginalisation of Frederick Soddy for his work on the money system. You know, I, it, it, it goes on and on and on. And people think that their five minute attention span and reading some article on some blog somewhere, which has taken them more than 10 minutes to read, which turns them into some sort of fucking scholar. Well, it's not. It's just, you know, I, I, I'm just sick of people parading their ignorance and laziness. Um, and, and calling everybody else sheep and asleep, all the rest of it, because they haven't read the same shitty article that they've read, you know, with their reading age of 10 or whatever it is. I mean, it, it, it is driving me nuts. Well, it's not. I mean, it's not driving me nuts. It's just, you know, I, 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 I can't, you know, I've come off social media and all the rest of it. You know, I, there's nothing there. It, it's a nothing burger, you know. The mainstream media, alternative media and online activism is a great big fucking nothing burger. That's what it is. Local, the, the, uh, politics as presented in all of those places is another great big bloody nothing burger. Right. But in real life goes on. It's a wonderful world. There's tons and stuff to get get on with. And people just have to step up and take responsibility. Right. That's that's what you have to do. Right. Whatever that means for you and doing something positive every day in real life. Um, oh, here's another. Um, oh, it was uh, Goethe said that um, uh, something about uh, all theory is grey and, and, and there's no substitute for, um, you know, for. For, for, for the real, the solid. I, I forget the absolute quote, but but I mean, Goethe sort of said it way more. What did he say? All theory is. Uh, let me tell I'll, I'll tell you what it says, because I I, um, I wrote a song several years ago called um, Let Them Eat Cake. Uh, and it's one of the slides in that song. Um, but let me just find it because I, I can't remember it. And it's it's worth looking Worth, worth looking at. Um, switch uh, I mean, I wrote this song in 2010, I think it was. Um, and, it, you know, I, 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 I spent 18 months studying pretty seriously. Um, and, you know, whilst I've learned a lot of of, of stuff since and, and and got down into some of the sort of the gubbins of it all 
you know, the general framework of all this stuff is, is, is 18 months of serious study if you do it full time, which I did, and, and seven days, you know, and a proper working day, you know, eight hours without any lunch, and you, you know. Uh, so for most people that have got other stuff to do, it will take them a little longer. Uh, but but basically, two years of lockdown is long enough for anyone to get off their arse and 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 and, and switch on the grey matter. Um, let me just get this up, and I'll tell you what what he said. Um, there we go. Let me cake. Just play that and get to the slide. I'll find it fairly quickly once it's up. I think it's well, here we are. This is one of the slides. And an ounce of action is worth more than a ton of theory. So one of them. Uh, here's another one. Oh, that, that's about aphorisms. Here we are. This is it. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. This is the quote. Right. Here you go. Right. He's sitting down. All theory is grey, my friend, but forever green is the tree of life. How about that? That's uh, <laughs> Johann Wolfgang von Goethe said that. So all theory is grey, my friend, but for, but forever green is the tree of life. In real life, mate. In real life. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, what can I say? I can only say yesterday, as well as playing frisbee, I picked some blackberries. Oh, um, wonderful! What did you did you make anything with them? Um, well, a a I crumble was made. Oh, crumble! Lovely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I didn't actually do the crumble making bit. I just helped with the berry picking. But um, I think the crumble was oat and I think oh, some cinnamon was put on top. Beautiful. Oh, but blackberry crumble is just gorgeous. Johanna went out kick it, uh, picking blueberries in the wood. Kids the other day came back with two buckets full. It's a really good blueberry season over here. But we, when we were on holiday, we were all talking about that. One of our favourites in my family is, is blackberry and apple tart. Uh, oh. love it. And, you know, blackberry and apple crumbles nice too. But the big question is ice cream or cream? <laughs> <laughs> I feel that that is not a theoretical debate, that one. You, you put your money where your mouth is, as it were. Well, that's right. <laughs> but, you know, I, I mean, put that in a manifesto, you know. <laughs> no, exactly. I've, um, so, yeah, in terms of my routine today, I decided to go walkies and pick up the city am i was quite lucky that the um the paper lucky in a way the paper that i used to pick up for free that's the city am which is like a collection of pr uh releases mm -hmm. like other papers but really much more overtly uh finance prs um they used to have it outside all of the tube stations yeah. um, or at least they used to have it outside made of ale next to where i live and now it's not made of ale and it's not warwick avenue so i have to go to paddington to pick it up which is good because you know that way i go for a walk in the morning and pick it up you know uh, Ooh, yeah well that's uh, which, no, which that's i'm that. doing now that's the thing i mean i i, I yeah i mean I, I like i say i mean I, I i'm busy i enjoy working anyway i mean you know i, I, I do like my job i like my profession you know so um it's 
and as I say, I mean, all, all this other stuff, um, I, well, it, it, it's, you know, the end of the world is not nigh. There always used to be that bloke, he's got something green, wasn't he, with his, uh, with his sandwich board at Piccadilly Circus, you know, the famous... Um, Oh, I mean, I don't know that guy, but obviously I've come across others. Well, he's dead called... now. I mean, he's, he was, he'd be ancient now if he's still alive. OK, yeah, there was a guy called Kenneth who was at Parliament Green all the time with, uh, you know, Jesus is coming. I asked him, he told me he was a Presbyterian, and I asked him if he... Um... I was a bit naughty, actually, inspired by Ned Flanders of The Simpsons. I asked him if, as a devout Christian, he'd ever bought an insurance product. And he said, oh, yes, absolutely, you know, to look after my wife, etc." And I said, don't you think that's gambling? And uh, that was interesting. But, uh, well, I, it's, mate, I, it's, well, the end of the world is not nigh. And, and there's, <laughs> there are always millenarian uh, maniacs about, no less in this age than any other. And, you know, um, Nostradamus hasn't been right yet. I had this conversation with him the other day and he sort of said, oh, but, but he's been right about some things. And I said, well, yeah, you talk to anyone that makes their predictions. They'll tell you the ones they think that they're, they're approximate on, you know. I mean, how many people will refer back to a conversation they had in 2009 about the, uh, about the, the great crash at that point? And stand by whatever it was there, or, or could even access it. I did a blog about one of my conversations in two thousand and nine on the Motley Fool the other day. You know, so I, you know, I people excuse themselves uh, of, of of the necessity for being um, truthful about what their version of the truth was. Any point in time, you know, Room One Hundred and One is not exclusive for Big Brother. What we've all got to do is have a good rummage around our own room 101 and fucking have a good look at ourselves. That's what I say. Sure. Well, just behind me right now is the uh, Barclay Homes development that mm -hmm. took a while to come up. That had been a... That was empty land for about 25 yeah, years. Nice. Yeah, it looks like yeah. a nice scheme. Very nice. I expect they're expensive, are they? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the story is also with... Um, Lucky Homes have the highest average selling price of any of the major UK house builders, largely in, in, in just London and South East. Yeah, it says an elegant collection of one, two, three, four bedroom apartments and penthouses. I don't know, as you said, uh, if... Well, they build oh, a good I, product, I, Barclay. There's no, you know, it's just not affordable for most people. <laughs> yeah, which is a question for this area. You know, uh, because right opposite is Church Street, which is not famous for being um, populated by people with lots of money. Hmm. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there was a um, there was a change of government here in the local elections. So the Labour Party won, which is a huge. Oh, well, for well, one of my business associates was telling me about that because he lives in that in. in uh, is it Westminster? Where, where I think you mentioned it to me last time. I think you were yeah. here just after the election because mm. I think I might have saw, yeah, seen I, you. Yeah, I, I had I had and, uh, coffee. I had a meeting and coffee at uh, Home House with 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 with. Is with, it Portman Square? Yes. It that yeah. meeting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I remember I met you as you walked up. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so it's quite interesting because I live in Maida Vale, as you know, and the, a new magazine has came came through. And so I think what happens is whenever you get a new, a change of local government, mm. they scrap the old council magazine and they create a new one. So it said volume one of Westminster something. And um, they have a, a double page spread where you can see all the wards and all the councillors. And I looked at my ward and then to the right on that same uh, double page spread, it says the names of the people with the big jobs. And I could see that Two people from my ward, I've only got three councillors in my ward, two of the three people from my ward have got two big jobs. One's in charge of health and social care, uh, and the other one might be in charge of, I don't know if it, I don't think it's planning, but it's something really mm. big. Uh, may, may, may have been governance or something, something really big. And then the mother of the third councillor uh, is in charge of something 
uh, as well. And so then there's another double page spread next to it, all about Maida Vale. Yeah. Uh, well, all the places I mean, you can go. Good luck to them because, you know, uh, stuff can be done at that level. Um, and, and um, you know, they, 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 they uh, you know, I wish them all the luck in the world. For for you know for the people who made well my 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 my, my friend is uh, business association is is a very wealthy man but but um uh you know he 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 he's interested in affordable housing and all the rest of it and you know uh, he and I were talking about what they might be able to do to you know to actually tackle that issue in in that area but. Um, yeah. What type, anyway. of, what, type of idea, what type of ideas did he have? Uh, well, he has been developing and I've been developing along with him with my hematics uh, group, um, a system for delivering affordable housing. So, sure. you know, I mean, we, we, you know, we, we've both done a lot in that direction. If you go online and look at the hematics app, um, which I, I made a mock-up because I've got a meeting coming up at one o'clock. We're, we're pushing the button to start rolling all the stuff now. Um, but if, if you search Met Homes on the web, you, you'll find his website there. And, and what they've come up with is is is, is, is brilliant. I mean, they've, they've did, did you know, say Net Homes, Net Met M E T Homes, Met Homes. It's re Met re homes. Re okay. renamed from Parabuild Solutions. And they they built four affordable houses on a in Lambeth with with Paul Lambeth Council and Council joint joint with um, W S Atkins the surveying group, um, but they've made more progress since we've been working together. I think than they did on that project for various reasons. But um, W S Atkins have got an outfit called Edegrath or whatever, which stands for Everyone Deserves a Roof Over There. Okay, oh my God. But, um, but I don't think they've put many roofs over that many deserving people just yet <laughs> but uh hopefully they will at some point but, yeah so yeah i mean right. you know it, and there are lots of other people trying but there are also lots of other people running around in 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 in, in ever decreasing you know i renamed my blog on the rld website the uh, at the risk of reiterating myself blog really yeah <laughs> that's what you called it <laughs> at the risk of reiterating myself that's cool I love it. All right. Well, um, good talking to you. Thanks for yeah, you all that. too, Ranch. And I hope to see you soon too. I'll be coming over. But but like I say, I've I've really got the pedal down at the moment. I've been working very very hard. Good stuff. Okay. Well, um, get on with it and uh, talk to you soon. We'll do. Cheers, mate. Take care. Bye. Bye.